welcome to worship. We are glad that you are here with us this morning. I know this is not what anybody wanted. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to cancel church yet or not. Um, and so I thought I would just pre-record something to be prepared. Um, if we get together in person, then we will all be watching this together. Um, I have a strong suspicion that a lot of us are going to stay home, even if we do have in-person worship. So... Uh, we'll be watching this together from multiple locations. So welcome to worship. I'm glad that you are here with us. As far as announcements go, um, end of the year statements are in the sanctuary. Uh, those will go out in the mail uh, this week, next week, sometime. If you haven't picked them up yet, you still have a little bit of time to do that. Um, inclement weather. If the school district is closed, the office is closed. If we close on a Sunday, I will email, I will Facebook, I will start the phone tree, and I will report to the major news companies. Um, so that's how that will work. Um, I know also for the last announcement that um, I sent out a COVID reminder. COVID is surging in the area. I have been uh, under the weather. It's not COVID. I got tested um, like, uh, like last week. Andrea had COVID. Now some more of her family is experiencing symptoms. So it's there, it's everywhere. Um, if you feel sick, stay home. Please continue to wear a mask. We will remain socially distant and masked in our sanctuary and in our small groups. And if you can get vaccinate, vaccinated and boosted, please do so. If you have any other questions about that, please let me know. Those are all of the announcements that I have. So let us prepare our hearts for worship. If we are gathering in person, we will light the candles. If we are not, then I have a candle here that is lit. We light a candle to um, bring in the light of the Holy Spirit into our worship services. Will you join me in our call to worship? Jesus surprised the people at the wedding. They were sure they would be disappointed. They thought that their host wasn't prepared for their needs. We aren't much different. We aren't sure God is prepared for our needs. Lord, change our whining into praising. Change our moaning and complaining into celebrations of joy. And now let us praise God together. Please join me in singing, This is the Day. few moments of the passing of the peace, I, uh, if we're in person, turn and wave to one another, wave to those who are online. If you are watching online, now is a great time for you to comment that you are watching or send an email to the church saying that you are watching. Our email is smithvillemoumc at gmail.com. Let us continue praising our God together. Please join me in singing Freely Freely. Jesus, I 
bow your heads with me. Lord, open our hearts to the surprising ways in which, in which you offer to us your love and your presence. Help us to truly believe in the wondrous ways that you work in our lives. Give us hearts and spirits for service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our children's sermon today, I'm going to be reading um, a story from my Learn to Read Bible. Um, but I'm gonna turn the camera so we can see uh, see it a little bit better. So here we go. The most important commandment. Someone asked Jesus, which of God's rules is the most important? Jesus said the first and the greatest commandment is to love your God with all your heart, with all your soul and mind. He said the second is to love other people like you love yourself. Jesus said, all of God's commands come from these two. What matters most is that we love God and that we love other people. What matters most is that we love Jesus and that we love other people. So this week, kids, go and love other people. When we love other people, that means we are also loving God because the Bible says that God is love. So the more love we put out into the world, the more God we put out into the world. Jesus loves you, always remember that. It comes now for a time of prayer and the names of the people and situations that we are praying for are on the screen. So I'm going to give us a few moments of quiet music to read those names and to pray for those names. Um, there's a lot of grief, there's a lot of pain, and there's a lot of people who are lonely. So let's remember to pray for a God that knows our desires and our wants before we can express them. It's also time for you to pray your prayers to God. So let us pray.
Will you bow your heads with me? Lord of light and joy, the daylight hours are becoming longer for us. Evening comes a little later and the dawn is earlier, but the darkness in our hearts persist. We continue to look at the miraculous ways you work in our lives as mere stories or happenstance. How foolish we are. From the beginning of all that is, you have poured your love and light into this world and into our lives. You have offered us countless blessings and opportunities for service, some of which we have followed, others that we have ignored. You have forgiven and healed our spirits. We continue to bring before you the names and situations of people that are in the direst of needs. We ask for your healing mercies, and yet we wonder if you really are with us. Turn our moaning and mourning and crying into songs of praise and hope. Give us spirits of trust and rejoicing that we may truly be your people all of our days. Prepare us for joyful service in your world, for we ask this in Jesus' name. And let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Will you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen for offering today, we will take it in person and sing the doxology, or you can give online, and that information is right here now on your screen. Thank you so much for those who are committed to give, giving, and thank you so much to those who give beyond their means. God knows your heart. God sees your work. And I give thank God thanks for that. Please join me in singing Many Gifts, One Spirit. Thank you. 
scripture today comes from the Gospel of John, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. I am reading from the NRSV version. The words are here on the screen, or you can read along with me in your own Bible. John 2, 1 through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, so the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. So the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Jesus turning water into wine. Uh, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day, this moment. Let the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, O God, for you are my rock and my redeemer. Open our hearts, open our ears, and open our minds so that when we leave this place, we know that we have met with you. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. So Jesus changes water into wine. Now, the Galilee that Jesus is in uh, that Jesus has grown up in is a relatively fertile country. So it's, it's a farmland, um, at least in comparison with some of the other regions in the area. Um, its resources enabled many of the people to be self-sufficient, but with taxation that was oppressive, uh, transportation was difficult and almost no one had discretionary income. Um, feeling, feasting and celebrating took place only when there was a great occasion. One of the hallmark events in the life of a family was the wedding of a son or a daughter. And very often uh, in a Jewish wedding, a wedding festival would last a full week. Well, before the week was out, a miscalculation became evident. Not enough wine was secured. Word of this mistake was passed on to Mary, Jesus's mother, and she passed this news to Jesus. And by the grace of God, the common water was changed into the uncommon. The ordinary made extraordinary. Jesus is unmasked. Jesus unmasked God's glory working in him. That little excerpt is an excerpt from the commentary for today. So they're at a wedding. Jesus, Mary, and his disciples. Where's Joseph? I don't know. Um, they have no wine. And so... Um, Mary goes to Jesus and says, they have no wine. And Jesus looks at his mother and says, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? Kind of like a smart mouth teenager. And then he says, my hour has not yet come. Yet, he did listen to his mother. And so this made me think, who is it that believes in us? Who is it that always have, always will believe in us? Who is it that nudges us to be the very best version of ourselves? In that instant, in that moment, for Jesus, it was his mother. In our lives today, hopefully we have more than one person that nudges us to be the best person of ourselves that we can be. And hopefully we have a lot of people that believe in us. You see, Mary knew and believed still that Jesus was the Son of God and that he could do miracles. 
She believed in him. She knew he could solve the problem of no wine. So Jesus did his first signs in Cana of Galilee. The word of scripture says Jesus did this, the first of sign of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory, God's glory, and his disciples believed him. His disciples believed him. Have you ever been told have any has anyone told you something negative about yourself you know like you're just a pansy or you're weak or you'll never do that you know unthinkable thing uh you know you'll never finish seminary and become a pastor as a single mom and you think to yourself first you think to yourself oh maybe they're right and then shortly after that you think uh who are you to tell me that i am gonna prove you wrong just watch unfortunately there are people in this world that say things like that to us because they are just plain mean or because they want to control your emotions or because they enjoy watching you fall apart i guess all of that is mean and I think that Jesus might 100% know what that feels like, like that. Because think about it, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth is a small town of little significance. Jesus was born of a virgin. And Jesus was the son of God, is the son of God. So think about that. Think about, we know very little about Jesus growing up. Like I said a couple weeks ago, think about growing up being Jesus. His mom conceived him as a virgin. His dad wasn't really his dad because God was his dad. And a small town. The whole thing of Mary being visited by Gabriel and Joseph having the dream saying to go ahead and marry Mary. Uh, that whole thing. That whole story that Mary's giving birth to the child of God, that was a rumor that spread like wildfire and you know it, you and I both know how small town rumors spread. So I bet there were people Jesus grew up with that said, yeah, right, Jesus, the son of Joseph, the son of God, I don't think so. I don't think so. Now imagine Jesus, Jesus knows, Jesus knows who he is. Jesus knows who he is in God's eyes. Jesus knows who he is. He knows the whirlwind of love that he's about to drop in this world. He knows all of this. And so when his mother nudges him, like all mothers do, like all parents do, he gives into his mother and changes the ordinary wine, water into wine and completely blows everybody's mind. Jesus turned water into wine because he knew who he was in God. Because all of those naysayers in his life, he didn't listen to. And he listened to the voice from heaven that said, you are my child, you are my beloved, and I have a plan for your life. Now let's get down to this turning the water into wine thing. Okay, so he turned the water into wine. The servants who had drawn the water knew that it was water before it was wine, okay? And in the scripture, it says that God's glory was revealed in Jesus when he turned the water into wine. So those, those servants who picked up those heavy jars and filled them with water and hauled them over to the, the head guy of the wedding knew, knew that, they, that that miracle happened, knew that Jesus did that. God's glory 
even if we think we're small fish like the servants filling jars with water, God's glory can still shine through. God can still use us, little people, for God's glory. And so that got me thinking about all of the ways in which God uses the people of the Bible to reveal his glory. And it reminded me of Moses. It reminded me of Moses and of David and of Ruth and of Naomi and of uh, Esther. And it reminded me of Rahab and it reminded me of uh Deborah, the, the female, it reminded me of so many small people, so many people who didn't fit into society's labels. When the unexpected happens, no matter what it is, God can redeem it. While we may rather have avoided the situation in the first place, God has the power to transform it in our lives. God can use us for a greater purpose. And you may be thinking, yeah, okay, God can use Pastor Rebecca. That's that. She's called to that. God isn't going to use me. I'm too messed up. That's not true. Moses killed a man. David killed a man. Rahab was a prostitute. And God used each and every one of them for God's glory. The Bible is filled with filled with stories like that. So just a, a little bit of Old Testament scripture here. Exodus chapter three, verses 11 and 12 says, but Moses protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people out of Egypt, to lead the people Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this very mountain. So Moses asks God, who am I? Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Me? You have got to be uh, mistaken. Me? You want to use me? Who am I to lead the people out of Egypt? Who am I? Who am I? Stuck in this dark place, in this crazy world? How is God gonna use me to bring any sort of healing and hope? He asked God that twice. We've never asked that question, right? But pay close attention to God's response because God never answers Moses' question. God's answer is, I will be with you. I will be with you. Emmanuel, God is with us. I will be with you. I will be with you. And in the end of that scripture, God not only said, I will be with you, but just wait and watch. It's all going to come out good in the end because at the end of this, you're going to be worshiping me on this holy mountain. Jesus took ordinary water and turned it into wine. God took ordinary people and brought forth God's glory over and over and over again in scripture. So let us not forget that ordinary, very fallible people can do extraordinary things in this world. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me. And then this last thing that I want to talk about is that God kept the good wine for last, or they kept the good wine for last. Kept the good wine for last. Even when we are hurting in our very souls, when we've had just a rough go of it, even when the darkness looms and we don't see a way out of this, the last thing I wanted to do was to pre-record another sermon. I am so tired of this pandemic. Even 
when the darkness looms, even when the chaos seems it's never going to go away, even when God seems distant, even when you think you have run away from God, even when you think there's no coming back from this, God saves us and saves the best for last. God is not done with you. He's not done with you. He's not done with me. No matter what, no matter what, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for this church. And my prayer is that you feel that encouragement this week, that when we meet someone else that might need encouragement, we can remind them that God uses ordinary people in ordinary events for extraordinary things. And remember, the more people we love, the more love we put out into the world, the more God we put out into the world. Now I know we're not celebrating Holy Communion today because of the weather and, and situations. Um, I didn't want to spread my germs I did get tested for COVID, it was negative, but God only knows. Um, and so the next time we gather in person, we will celebrate Holy Communion together. And we will remember that God took ordinary grain and ordinary grapes, ordinary things, and made a meal of sustaining grace for each and every one of us. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you so much for all of the ordinary stuff. Thank you, God, for your glory. And thank you, God, for taking us and using us for your extraordinary grace and glory in this world. Remind us, oh God, that we are your beloved children. Encourage us, oh God, that even when it's dark, to keep taking a step forward to keep trusting and to keep going. Surround us, God, and protect us until we meet again. And we say this prayer in your son's holy, awesome, and powerful name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our closing hymn today is Hymn of Promise, and I couldn't have picked a better hymn because it really is a promise that no matter what's going on in life, God sees it. Unrevealed until it's season, only God alone can see. Let us sing it together. Please join me in singing Him of Promise. <laughs> Receive these words of benediction. Oh, receive these words of benediction. 
May God's will be done here where we live. May impossible things come to pass. May we find strength in the journey and joy in the struggle through the grace of God. Amen. Let us take the Holy Spirit with us this week. Please join our hearts in song as we sing God be with you till we meet again. Thank you.